What's up guys, Asian here, and this is kind of a bonus video that I had thought about doing for a little bit. Um, it all started after I learned from Nephis's, uh, the time I was on Nephis's patch notes review, that ESO was deciding to cap out um, the crit damage modifier. I believe it's capped out at 125% now. Um, and I reflected that, hey, that's a pretty good idea to do in order to help control damage. But then my mind also kind of drifted a little bit um, after uh, that that stream when I was thinking, well, now that crit damage is capped, in theory, there should be an ideal crit chance as well. And so I kind of turned to the Genshin Impact Theory Crafting uh, to kind of figure out what exactly is the optimal crit chance that you would need uh, in ESO. So this is a Reddit post uh, about a year ago now that took a look at the optimum ratio of crit chance to crit damage in Genshin Impact. So in Genshin Impact uh, it has crit chance and crit damage and there is no cap to crit damage. However, it is widely accepted that the optimal ratio of crit chance to crit damage is 1 to 2. In other words, you want ideally twice as much crit damage as you have crit chance. So if you have, let's say, 80% crit chance, you want 160% crit damage. 160 is twice 80. This uh, Dragon Slave 49 provided the proof to show that the optimum ratio is 2. So I'll read through the post really quickly. Now this does uh, assume that you have a little bit of experience in Calc 1. So basically you're able to take derivatives and know what derivatives stand for. So here is, so basically when you're taking a look at the optimum ratio, it's an optimization problem, which means you basically have to um, take a derivative and set it equal to zero. So let's say you have some sort of extra damage dealt, which he calls E, uh, on average of any kind of damage, then basically you have your crit damage modifier, which we pretty much know. It's crit damage time your crit rate. So the maximum value is uh, basically, this is uh, the extreme value theorem which basically states, if we open up this link here, that for some continuous function on a closed interval, there's always going to be a maximum value, and there's always going to be a minimum value, and it's going to be a single value, as long as you're on a closed interval and it's a continuous function. So E in this case would be a continuous function, and you do have a bounds for this, because crit chance can't be lower than 5%, that's the base crit chance, and it can't be higher than 100%, so you are bounded based on those values here. So in order to find a maximum, you have to place a constraint. So in this instance, he let B be the budget for both stats. So you're going to factor out B at the end, but for now, it's assumed to be a constant. So in Gadget Impact, your crit chance, the values that you get from crit chance, is about half of what you would get for crit damage. So for any gear set, your crit damage, if you get crit damage on that gear set, it's going to be twice as much as you would get if you had crit chance instead. So then the equation would become this B, which is your constant, is equal to D, which is again, your crit damage, plus 2 times your crit rate. So B equals D plus 2C, and that's this formula here. So now that we, now that we have this, we can substitute back in your D using this formula here in your E formula. So basically what you're doing is you're solving for D here. Basically what you would do is you do B minus 2C equals D. And you replace that here in D in your original equation, E equals CD. Now that you have this equation here, this is a para parabolic equation. And so you have a maximum at a vertex, which means it's pretty easy. Your derivative is equal to zero at a vertex. I won't go into the calculus behind this, but just trust me that when you have a vertex, your derivative is equal to zero. So then you take the derivative with respect to C. So you do DE, uh, DC over DE, I should say. So basically what you're doing is you're factoring out your C. So if you multiply this out, you have CB minus 2C squared. So when you take the derivative of that, CB becomes B, and 2C squared becomes 4C, and you set that equal to 0. So now you can substitute D back in this equation. In other words, uh, you know that B equals, is equal to D plus 2C, so you can basically plug that in for B. So now you have 0 is equal to D plus 2C minus 4C, which means that D is equal to 2C. Which basically means that if you take the ratio of damage divided by crit chance is equal to 2. So there's your 2 to 1 ratio. 
So he basically makes a more general statement that says, in other words, crit damage should be about twice crit rate if instead the budget constraint were B equal to D plus AC, with A being some other arbitrary constant, you would get D is equal to AC instead, uh, where A is some value equal to or greater than zero. And that's just sort of a little math exercise that he leaves for everybody to, to figure out here. And then he goes on uh, further. So he also says that the characters start with a base of 5% crit chance and 50% crit damage. So if you were to only count bonuses from artifacts, weapons, and talents, you would want to add more crit until you reach the 2 to 1 ratio and then continue adding in that ratio. More precisely, you have C prime, which is your bonus crit, and D prime, which is your bonus crit damage. You have D prime is equal to 2 C prime minus 0 0.4. Uh, so where do you get that 0 0.4 from? That comes from your base. So this basically means it's not optimal to build crit damage until you have reached 25% total crit. In other words, if you do uh, D plus 0 0.4 divided by 2, then you add in that base 5%, you get 0 0.25. So basically what we have here then is that we have to figure out this arbitrary constant, which is whatever the ratio is between crit chance and crit damage. Now, ESO doesn't really have a good way to do that because there is no armor bonus that provides crit damage. So if you go to like, let's say Mother Sorrow, you can see that you, uh, you know, the two piece, three piece, four piece have a certain value to it. And these generally are considered equal to each other. So in Zoss's terminology, 1096 max magicka is equal to 657 crit chance, which is equal to 3% additional crit chance. There is no standard armor bonus for crit damage. So what we have to rely upon instead is your major minor buffs instead in the relationship between those two because Zoss has recently standardized all of these major minor bonuses. So major force is your crit damage bonus, which increases it by 20%. And if we take a look at major prophecy, which is uh, spell crit, it increases your spell crit by 26 29. If we divide that by the 219, which is what 1% crit chance is, you get about 12%. So you have a ratio of about 20 to 12 here. If you take a look at Minor, you will also see that holds up with crit damage for Minor Force being 10% and uh, Minor Prophecy being 1314, which, again, if you divide uh, by 219, 1314 divided by 219, you get 6%. So it's, again, 10 over 6. Or uh, if you divide it even further, divide it both sides by 2, you get 5 over 3. So now you have your maximum crit damage. So if you go back to this equation here, so, you're, so we have our D. We know our D, and we have now our A. So now we can solve for this equation here. So your D is 125, and then it's equal to 10, uh, 5 over 3 times C. So what we want to do then is divide this, this 125 by 5 over 3. Uh, if you divide by a fraction, you're multiplying by the reciprocal, so we multiply by 3 over 5 instead. So the optimum crit chance that you want to hit is going to be about 75%. Now. There is also the caveat that you start with a base 50% crit chance and you start with a 10% crit, uh, sorry, you start with 50% crit damage and 10% crit chance. So just like the uh, addendum here, you don't want to build crit damage until you reach a certain number of total crit. However, it's a lot easier to build crit in ESL, so we aren't really, really concerned about that. So bottom line is, if you're trying to optimize for crit chance in ESO based on the new crit damage cap, your ideal is going to be 125 times five over, uh, 3 over 5, which again is equal to 75% crit chance. That is going to be your optimum sort of crit chance, all else being equal. Now, of course, ESO is more complicated than Genshin Impact. Genshin doesn't have quite as many statistics uh, as ESO does. It doesn't have things like damage done modifiers or damage taken modifiers. It just has attack uh, and elemental attack bonuses. Uh, so considerably fewer variables to take consideration uh, in uh, Genshin Impact than ESO. So the 75% is with the caveat that there are definitely some trade-offs here you got to take into consideration that only exist in ESO that don't exist in Genshin Impact. So the real optimum crit chance is likely going to be a little bit lower than this. If I were to ballpark it, I'd probably say somewhere around 70% uh, ish is probably going to be close to your optimum crit chance, somewhere between 65 and 70%. Just because of the additional sort of damage modifiers that are in the equation, like penetration, damage done, damage taken, spell damage, max magica, all that stuff. But that is it for this video. Hopefully you guys found this informative. I know I was a little bit surprised at uh, how applicable Genshin math would be to this problem, this optimization problem here. 
um, and that it actually worked out to be fairly realistic. 75% crit chance is actually fairly realistic for you to reach an ESO. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.